friends, welcome to my workplace for hands-on FACO and SICS training. This is a cataract with grade 5 nuclear sclerosis. The patient is under topical anesthesia. Let us observe this surgery. This is the main incision with a 2.8 millimeter steel keratome. We have to be very careful while making this wound. The whole length of the wound should be at the limbus. No portion of the wound should go towards cornea. This is phenocaine, which contains gylocaine, phenylephrine, and tropicamide. This is adrenaline. And now, the anterior chamber is filled up with 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. And then, a uh, sideboard is made on the left side of the main incision. The sideboard is about 3 clock hours away from the main incision. Here, the whole length, whole width of the sideboard is at mid limbus or posterior aspect of the limbus. Visco is applied over the cornea for better visibility. And now, a uh, uterata forceps is being used for capsulorexis. The anesthesia has been done by proparacaine eye drops and intracameral gelocaine. Capsulorexis is being done. Since this is a hard cataract, size of the rexis is deliberately more than 5.25 millimeter. In this case, it is about 5.5 millimeter. Hydrodissection is done very gently. We could see the fluid wave in this case. The nucleus comes forward, the nucleus is tapped gently, and then the nucleus is mobilized. The nucleus rotated freely. Some more visco, the antechamber is filled off, and now is the time to introduce the FECO needle in the anterior chamber. The machine is Oatly Cataract 3, and the microscope is OMS 90 from Topcon. No financial interest. And now some superficial lens matter is aspirated. And then the handpiece is turned to make the bevel up. And then the chopper is used to push the nucleus little down. This is submarine chop. The tip goes into the substance of the nucleus just in front of the main incision. It travels through the nucleus just as submarine goes under the surface. And this is a nice crack. The nucleus is rotated on 180 degree. We come to the other side. On sculpt, hold this heminucleus with vacuum and the two heminuclei are separated completely. And then this heminucleus is chopped, but the two pieces are not free. They are joined to each other at the center. I come to the other heminucleus, try to chop this, and as usual, the tip goes through the substance of the nucleus, and in this case, we could get two free pieces. One free piece has been subdivided into two smaller pieces and then emulsification is carried out. Ultrasonic energy being used is 80 percent in continuous mode. Flow rate is 45 ml per minute. Vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury. Each nuclear piece is tilted and emulsification is started from the apex. 
this nuclear piece was subdivided into two smaller pieces and emulsification is done. And now the other hemineucleus has been chopped but the two pieces are not free. See how I make the nuclear pieces free. Rotate, tilt the hemineucleus, go underneath, apply a bus to ultrasound and the two pieces are free. One piece is pushed down and the other piece is emulsified. Ultrasonic energy as I said is high but it is far away from the corneal endothelium. Most of the time the fake corneal is at the central part. And now the, this is the last nuclear piece. At this time, the vacuum is reduced to 350 and flow rate to 35. And emulsification is carried out. An eye is kept at the, at the capsule, posterior capsule, whether it is moving forward or not. Any doubt or if I observe trampolining of posterior capsule, I will scaffold technique is used. But in this case, with low vacuum and very slowly, I am emulsifying the base and a epinuclear shell is protecting the posterior capsule. Done. Come out, inject some visco, the patient never complained of pain. There is chemosis of conjunctiva. I make small cuts at the conjunctiva. And now cortical cleanup is being done. This is a Simco cannula, 22 gauze. The cortex from the inferior part has been removed the sub-incisional cortex is to be removed. The incision is small and I could not introduce the Simco cannula through this. So here goes the irrigation aspiration cannula. The irrigation cannula lifts the anterior wall of the main wound and the antechamber is maintained. Inject visco, fill up the anterior chamber and the capsular bag. And here goes a beautiful intraocular lens, technison from Johnson and Johnson. In my opinion, this is the best monofocal lens available in the market. No financial interest. The lens has gone into the capsular bag. This is a removal of visco. First, I use the Simco cannula for some time and I reduce the volume of the visco. 
and then I introduce the bimanual irrigation aspiration cannuli. The irrigation goes through the main wound and aspiration through the side port. First irrigation is used for a few seconds, anterior chamber and irrigation and aspiration is being used together. Whenever there is a tendency of the iris to get incarcerated in the side port, I remove the irrigating cannula first. Some moxie and then the side port is closed. The main wound has been constructed in such a way that it does not require any hydration to get closed. This is the final lavage of the anterior chamber to reduce the incidence of TAS. The anterior chamber is nicely formed. Integrity of all the wounds are checked with cotton taped Janssen Bart. Few drops of moxie is applied over the cornea and the case is concluded. We started here and we have reached to this point. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence.